She lived a glamorous life, traveling the world and making her followers on TikTok smile. She had a free spirit, living fast and having fun. And she died a mysterious death, surrounded on all sides by unanswered questions. This is the tragic story of a life that ended much too early. A heartbreak shrouded in several confusing circumstances, and a New Year's Eve party that would change the lives of everyone involved forever. Christine DeSera was born on April 13, 1997, making her 23 years old by the end of 2020. She had graduated from college in media studies, and she used her education to become a flight attendant for PAL Express, one of Philippines' largest international airlines. This was a highly respected profession, and it provided both stability and adventure to Christine's life. And when she wasn't traveling the world, she was living it up in her home city of Manila. Christine also lived a very public online life, as she had almost 200,000 followers on Instagram and just as many on TikTok. The videos she posted were wholesome, bubbly, and goofy clips of her joking around with friends or making silly faces while in the back of a plane. You never can tell who someone truly is from their online presence alone, but the person Christine was on her Instagram and TikTok seemed like a kind, fun-loving, and open person who loved to make the people around her laugh. That, as well as her remarkable beauty, was probably why so many people flocked to her online presence. And so Christine lived a life of travel and smiles for multiple years, growing her following and having a blast. But everything was about to change on a fateful New Year's Eve. On December 31st, 2020, Christine met up with three of her guy friends named Valentine, Ray, and Edward at the City Garden Grand Hotel in Manila. It was New Year's Eve, so everyone was drinking, and they were hoping to keep the party going well into the night. That's when Christine's guy friends started inviting other men, and their party quickly grew. Before long, nine other guys had shown up to the room they were in, including a manager who worked at the hotel. And as midnight struck, a heavily inebriated Christine was the lone woman in a room of 12 men. Directly after midnight, Christine called her mom to wish her Happy New Year. Her mother says that Christine did not seem overly drunk at that time, and she told her she was happily partying with her co-workers. Little did her mother know that that call would be the last time anyone spoke to Christine outside of the hotel room. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. As the night went on, the group continued to become more and more intoxicated. They had actually booked several rooms in the hotel, and so they hopped back and forth between locations throughout the night. This allowed the hotel's security cameras to record them as they walked through the hallways, and what the footage captured is mostly what you would expect from a New Year's Eve party. Men were laughing and stumbling around, and Christine was excitedly buzzing back and forth, shoeless and constantly smiling. And for most of the night, everything continued in this boozy fashion, but there were two moments caught on CCTV that would be relevant later on. At 2.52 a.m., Christine was seen walking back to the room everyone else was in with one of her friends named Valentine Rosales. They were alone, it was late, and they were both far from sober, and right before they entered the room, something strange happened. Valentine and Christine stopped at the door and shared a small kiss. It lasted only a few seconds, then both friends laughed it off and went inside, but it was still a point of contention later on. But we'll get to that in a moment. The second moment of interest came at 4.13 a.m. The footage shows one of the guys carrying Christine back into a room, and her head is tilted in a way that suggests she isn't totally conscious. It's unclear whether she's asleep or just incredibly intoxicated, but either way, she was not able to walk or even stand by this point in the night. Her friend carried her back into the room their group originally started partying in, and that was the last time Christine was seen alive. And from this point on, the story of Christine to Sarah becomes a little bit tricky. The next morning, one of Christine's friends reported finding her asleep in the bathtub at about 10 a.m. Why he didn't move her or check to see if she was alright will forever be a mystery, but he claims that she was breathing at that time. Then later that day at noon, another friend came into the bathroom to find out that she was no longer breathing and that her lips were blue. Obviously, this was a terrible sign, so Christine's friend immediately alerted hotel staff. Staff member tried to administer CPR until the ambulance showed up, but it was hopeless. When medics finally showed up, they immediately put her into a wheelchair to rush her to the hospital. As they moved her, however, her limp body fell out of the chair, and they had to pick her back up off the floor several times. 
And when Christine finally made it to the hospital, it became clear that help came much too late. Christine was pronounced dead upon arrival, and while this is undoubtedly a tragic end, her passing also served as an unlikely beginning. A beginning of wild hardship for almost everyone else involved. The initial public reaction to Christine's death was one of outrage. People believed the men Christine was with had drugged, violated, and killed her, and suspicion for the men skyrocketed. Then, on January 4th, Filipino police issued a statement saying that they had recorded the event as a homicide case, as well as a few other crimes, and that the men Christine was with were going to be hunted down and arrested. This statement further exaggerated public outcry, and Christine's friends instantly became villainized. Hashtag justice for Christine DeSera went viral on Twitter, and arguments broke out all over the internet whether Christine was brutally murdered or if she was to blame for partying so hard. Senator and legendary boxer Manny Pacquiao even offered tens of thousands of dollars as a reward for anyone who could give information about the death. And at the time, it seemed like all signs pointed to the boys. That is, until some holes started appearing in the story. Firstly, all of the accused men came out in the media and claimed their innocence. They said they were heartbroken and hurt that they didn't help Christine more, but they had nothing to do with her passing. They also dismissed the charges of drugging and violating Christine by revealing a bombshell. All 12 men involved claimed to be gay. Gregorio de Guzman, one of the three most central suspects, was quoted by the ABC-CBN news website as saying, Every one of the 12 accused was gay. My impression of her is she likes to hang out with us LGBT members, he said. She's comfortable with us. I don't understand why people are thinking that we could be ever, we could ever be um, capable of doing this. This, of course, changed the tune of the public dialogue surrounding Christine's passing, but it didn't clear the men from suspicion. Several sources cited the video footage of Christine kissing Valentine as proof that the men were lying. Valentine, the man in the video, then came out to say that it was Christine who initiated the kiss and that he just shook it off to be polite. This is clearly conjecture, but if you watch the footage, it isn't a wild conclusion to make based on their body language. There was also the matter of several mysterious bruises all over Christine's lower body. At first, people assumed they were proof of the men's wrongdoing, but then more information came out from the emergency workers. It seems that the bruises may also have come from the time when Christine's body fell out of the wheelchair. So, despite the police's accusations and the public outcry, the case surrounding Christine was becoming quite contradictory. But that's when the autopsy report changed everything. According to the report, Christine actually died from natural causes. It appears that she probably had undiagnosed hypertension in her heart and that her heart weighed almost two times as much as a normal person's. This, paired with the excessive drinking Christine reportedly did that night, probably led to an aortic aneurysm, which is a rip in the biggest vein leading to the heart. This was clearly confusing news to everyone following the case, especially the police, who seemed the most set on perpetuating the homicide narrative. So a second autopsy was called, and while its results were not released to the public, it seems that it backed up the first set of results. All of the men involved that night were left alone to go about their lives and slam the police and the media. Many family friends of Christine still believe to this day that Christine was wronged by these men, and that there is more to the story. Some claim substance and excessive partying killed Christine. But what is certain is that a shining star and seemingly kind soul was taken away too soon. Do you believe that Christine could have died from natural causes? Or has someone involved gotten away with murder? Or even something worse? Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and if you have a dark crime tale you want to see, leave us a suggestion in the comments.